a great episode on the books today. I'm George. This is Meet Me for Coffee. And my next guest is... Randy Santel. How are you guys doing today? I am excited to be on the show. And Randy, uh, he also goes by the name of Atlas. He's the proud owner of foodchallenges.com. And you've seen him all over YouTube. Uh, he's got 1.2 million subscribers. I wish I had that many subscribers. Uh, and he's got millions of people follow him all over the world. And it's just gone pretty crazy for you doing these food challenges, hasn't it? Yes. Yeah, I started back in March 2010, and everything's just been great. It was a long, about an eight-year climb to get uh, to the point where things were really going good. But we've also got 1.3 million people following on Facebook. So, And then we've only got about 140,000 on Instagram. But my main pages are YouTube and Facebook. I go by the term professional eater because I don't really do too many eating contests, more like competitive eating. I don't really use the term competitive eater because uh, an eating contest would be like that 4th of July hot dog contest that you watch uh, with Joey Chestnut eating the 70 plus hot dogs, which is crazy. I mostly do food challenges, just like on the show, Man versus Food. Now, how do you find these food challenges? Do you you go online and, and then it's like hey, there's one in uh, Thailand or the restaurants come to you and then they 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 book you to come out to the restaurant to do the food challenge? Well, uh, I've pretty much been the only person ever since I started that's really just only focused on food challenges. And that's one of the reasons I started foodchallenges.com. It was kind of the website I created that I wish I had had available back when I started in 2010. So there's a giant database for anybody interested in trying a food challenge. There's food challenges in over 50 countries around the world. And then, of course, in all 50 states uh, with, I think, the number two probably be in the UK. There's a whole bunch in Australia too, but you can get on there to find out all the food challenges near you. And then there's over a hundred articles showing everybody how to train, strategize, and dominate food challenges. Our motto is win before you begin. But in regards to food challenges these days, pretty much just, we have so many subscribers all around the world that either send me Facebook messages or email me, uh, just letting me know about challenges that may have popped up around them just wanting me to come to their area for the food challenge. But other than that, we just got the database that I've been maintaining uh, since the site started where I know about the food challenges that have been existing for a while. It's absolutely incredible. Um, how do you get ready for a food challenge, especially say, for example, I watched you eat an eight, eight pound burger or almost a hundred ounces of steak over, you know, it was a thickly cut steak. That was in Taiwan, wasn't it? Uh, the 95 ouncer, yeah, in Taiwan. The biggest one I've done was in South Dakota, actually, in Freeman, I think the city was called, but it was 100 ounces. At some point before I retire, I want to do a 120 ounce steak. That would be crazy. Uh, when are you going to retire? Do you have anything in plans? Uh, in uh, well, I'm in the process of becoming a registered dietitian, actually. Uh, wow. So I'm going to be converting all of my social media. I've been growing it with all the food challenges. I'm going to be transitioning over to helping people with nutrition and weight management. So that gets a lot of laughs. And once I become a dietitian, because of all the followers I've built up through all the food challenges, I'll automatically become the number one follow registered dietitian in the world. So there will be a lot of opportunity and responsibility with that. So I've been getting ready. I've already gotten the degree. In August of 2021, next year, I'll start an internship, uh, which will last 1,200 hours, and then I'll be able to take a test to do that. I'll be retiring from food challenges and all that pretty soon after because I've been doing it for over 10 and a half years now. Uh, my body is ready to be done. Uh, like, does it take a big toll on your body as in like, uh, have you had any near death experiences at all? No, uh, uh, people okay. comment about how they're genuinely concerned about my health all the time. And I always just kind of refer or respond back to them that I'm a professional and it's all under control. So yeah, I've never had any adverse health effects other than the weight gain. But back, actually, I never really answered your question. And it's kind of a two-part thing regarding how I train for food challenges. Back when I started, I was still working in the construction industry. My first degree in 2008 from Missouri State University in Springfield, Missouri, was construction management. So I did that from 2008 all the way up till October 26, 2013. I was doing stuff like that. But I was basically working construction jobs all during the week. And then on weekends, I would do food challenges. So on Thursday night, typically, I would try to eat like 12 or 13 pounds of watermelon. 
or else I would go to a nearby grocery store that had like a $6.99 all-you-can-eat salad bar. So I would just try to eat as many fruits and vegetables just because they were high water, high volume, lower in calories to try to reduce my amount of weight gain. But then I would be ready for all the food challenges I'd be doing over the weekend. Now I go on tours for like sometimes months at a time. So really I just have to train once. I'll do, uh, I don't really do too much watermelon these days. I'll go to Subway and I'll get four foot long sandwiches with all the vegetables. And then I'll try to eat all four of those and drink a gallon of water all in like 20 minutes. And if I can do that, my body is ready. But then I do my first food challenge. And then since I'm doing a challenge almost every day, each challenge that I do kind of keeps my body ready my stomach expanded and ready for the next one. So really on my tours, it's more about just exercising when I can and then drinking a lot of water, trying to have some fiber when I can to get all the food through me before the next one. Is that like your, that's your only meal of the day when you do the food challenge, right? Pretty much. Yeah. If I do a food challenge at like six or seven o'clock that I know is not that big or going to be that big to the point where it's going to require all my stomach capacity, I'll usually have uh, some kind of fruits or vegetables in the morning, just trying to get my body some nutrients because <laughs> the food challenges that I do aren't exactly uh, healthy. Uh, and then after the food challenges, like, how do you feel? Like, do you just want to just you ever get sick well, after or how does that work? That's kind of one of the things that I differ. And uh, we have sometimes hundreds of people at our events. So there's not really any events that we do anymore that have less than 30 or 40 people. And so after the food challenges, after I get done, I go right into the mode where I sign photos for people. I bring photos that I autograph. I take pictures, all kinds of stuff. So I'll be uh, signing photos and just doing one big meet and greet uh, from an hour before the challenge all the way up to sometimes two hours after the event. So there's not really any time to, to worry about any of that. I mean, if there's a challenge, it's like seven or eight pounds. It's just crazy. It is really a struggle, but I still am able just through gratitude, I guess, able to just meet and greet with everybody and just thank everybody for coming. Because it's awesome that end the, at the end of the day, people drive like uh, Katina, my girlfriend and I, she's a professional leader. We did a challenge recently and there were people that drove all the way from Oregon to Spokane, Washington to come meet us both and watch the challenge. That was over five hours. I mean, driving that long just to meet somebody and watch a meet, that's pretty cool. So I try to just uh, thank and be as grateful as I can at all the events. And then once I'm all done, usually I'll just sit down in my chair and just take a big breath and start drinking some water. Because most of the food challenges I do, they are just loaded up with salt. So definitely I get thirsty after them. So once I have some room, I start drinking water. And that helps with the digestion and starting to get all the food through me. And your body probably slows down a lot after too. Yes. Yeah. Some people like to eat or no, they like to work out, do some kind of fitness stuff afterwards. I don't really like to move around too much. So uh, any of the working out I do is definitely in the mornings well before the challenge to get myself hungry. Uh, you know what? I, I ate a Big Mac once with uh, a double Big Mac with like eight patties and like being food drunk is okay. I did it. I did it. I ate the whole meal. I actually wanted a milkshake, but I was I was told not to get it, but you can actually be food drunk. It's actually real, right? Um, oh, yeah. Depending on how much yeah, sodium. I mean, like even on Thanksgiving uh, for Americans or anybody that celebrates a, an event where they just eat a lot. Yeah, it's 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 unreal. Uh, go go back to the beginning. Uh, so uh, I heard that your fir first food challenge was when your friend invited you down to a pizza place and you guys uh, demolished this massive pizza. Uh, in, in the place where you were actually going to, to school at the time, right? Uh, yeah, let me get to that in one second, though. Let me okay. complete your thought. And I actually take digestive enzymes before every challenge because after you eat a giant meal, uh, one of the things is, is your body uses most of its energy and resources to start digesting that food. And sometimes after the meet and greets, I'll have to drive four, five, six hours to the next city where the event will be the next day. So I take the digestive enzymes to help my body with all of that recovery process so I don't risk falling asleep at the wheel or anything like that. But yeah, my very first food challenge was in St. Louis, Missouri. I was actually living in Kansas City at the time, 
uh, just three and a half hours away, four if you drive real slow. But um, I took my final photos for a body transformation contest that I did on March 12th of 2010. And then to celebrate, uh, I found out afterwards that I had won, but to celebrate the eight week body transformation contest that I competed in, my buddy invited me to do a 28 inch pizza challenge with him in St. Louis, where we're both from. Uh, we uh, played football and went to school together at Missouri State, where I got both of my degrees. But yeah, we had one hour to eat a 28 inch pizza with two meat toppings and uh, it was about 11 pounds, but we won and we got our $50 meal for free. But then the most important thing, the motivational point, uh, we got a check for $500. So everything just kind of sparked from there. Uh, as I was cashing the check, I was of course all smiling, uh, my 250 portion, and then just thinking, hey, we did pretty good with that. And I started looking into more food challenges. And a month later, I tried an 18 inch square pizza that over 120 people had failed. Nobody had won. I was the first person to finish in 53 minutes, and I got a check for $450. And then I just went crazy from there. Do you do a lot of spice challenges? Or you don't want to do a spice challenge? Uh, I used to do spicy food challenges uh, just uh, here and there, uh, just because they're kind of easy wins if you have the mental fortitude. But mm -hmm. in 2012, uh, I did a really bad one. I ate a dozen, or it might have been just 10, uh, in O'Fallon, Missouri, kind of near where the pizza was, uh, like a half hour from there. But it was all these wings covered in a Trinidad Maruga scorpion sauce. And then I think some extra stuff on top of that. But it took me two and a half minutes to eat these wings. And it took me like two and a half hours to be able to walk out of the bathroom. It was absolutely crazy. So I will do spicy food challenges, especially if they're ghost peppers or easier. But I have no desire to ever eat Trinidad and Scorpion or especially the hotter ones now, Carolina Reapers. Uh, I can only imagine how bad those suck. And I do not want to put myself through it. It's very important to watch people in the kitchen make your meal before you eat it, right? Oh, yeah. Yeah, we do that, especially just because now we've got uh, so many people watching our videos. That is one of the benefits is that the restaurants want me back there to make sure it's all going to go well so the event goes smooth. And then I'll be able to see it, uh, make sure it's all kind of made properly. And then the other thing is, too, is we have a, a video on our channel that we just posted in April earlier this year where I talk about four restaurants that really just tried to screw me over. And so uh, the restaurants were not on the, the, the beneficial receiving end uh, after that video posted. So most of the restaurants, when they look me up before events, they see that and <laughs> they know that uh, they don't want to be on that receiving end either. Because if somebody messes with your food, especially with the spice aspect of it, I remember watching a uh, kind of like a tell-all thing about man versus food. And Adam Richmond said yep. that there was a, 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 In Florida. a, hot, there's a Florida. hot wing eating contest he, or or a challenge he did. And yeah, they 420, it was called Sarasota, Florida, down a little bit south of Tampa. Yeah, and, and they, they made it extra spicy. And, and I guess he was on the floor of the bathroom for like for two hours after. And that, that's just a shame, right? Like it is. Yeah, it's put ridiculous. Out you're, put out what you're to, you're telling people you're gonna put out. Um, a man such as you, your stature. I mean, the food challenges thing is is basically your game now. Um mm -hmm having you come out is is great enough exposure for a place like a, a small joint here where i live or anywhere around the united states or even the world um just appreciate that someone with your stature your reach uh 1.2 million subscribers on on youtube is coming out because this is how it rolls now you know bad reputation if someone says something it can really hurt you it can yes yeah and i always try to keep everything positive that's one thing that our subscribers really appreciate. Uh, even when the food sucks, uh, if I know that the cook genuinely tried and wanted it to be uh, very well done, I still do everything I can to make sure it was great. Uh, there was a challenge in Madrid, Spain, actually. It was a seven pound burger patty or 3.2 kilograms. And I would say about six of the seven pounds were raw. It looked delicious and just perfect on the outside. But once I opened up the burger patty, it uh, it was just raw. It was almost pretty much still mooing, uh, which was not, of course, 
what I was hoping for. But I mean, those cooks all tried really hard. So I mean, it still didn't make the restaurant look good in the video. But at no point did I criticize them or talk negatively or anything like that. Oh, you guys suck and all this kind of stuff. Um, but no, I mean, if the cooks genuinely try, I always do everything I can to make sure. One of my favorite compliments is when the foods actually wasn't very good. Um, to see comments all over the video just saying, oh, that looked delicious. I love that because that made me, uh, that, that signifies that I did my job of keeping it positive. I mean, most food challenges, uh, there's not really that many people actively doing food challenges anymore. So, I mean, some of the food challenges, some restaurants, especially the ones in smaller areas, I mean, those chefs might prepare that food challenge meal maybe a couple times a month at most. So I don't want people to negatively uh, reflect a restaurant based on a, a food challenge meal that the chef really had no practice preparing. So that's another reason that I try to keep everything positive. Absolutely. Positivity is the best thing you can do, you know, push it forward, the positivity. Especially these days. I mean, there's enough negativity going around. Absolutely. Uh, there's people want to see an outlet of somebody that's actually genuinely happy enjoys what he does and a lot of people can get that when they watch our videos which is awesome i i do i mean like i i've got my whole family addicted to that and bizarre foods we just kind of we watch uh youtube's just so crazy because we have it all on our tv now with the smart tv we pop up a, a needing challenge from you and then all of a sudden we're like four or five deep and then it just they keeps can get on. addicting is what i hear so yeah, binge watching. Yes. I always love when people say that. I, I do think that if I were to try an eating challenge, I'd have to prepare. So I would probably consult you and how to do it. Um, oh, yeah. Yeah, and you can get on foodchallenges.com for that. Our big motto is win before you begin. And the three parts of that are train, strategize, dominate. And by train, it just makes sure that you have your stomach and your body physically trained to the point where you're going to be able to fit all the food in it. And then strategize, of course, there's like 30 more than that types of food challenges and you wouldn't approach a burger challenge the same way you'd approach an ice cream challenge. I mean, there's fundamentals, there's basic fundamentals for each challenge, but each one usually has something special. And then if you are trained and you've got a good strategy, uh, you're able to dominate. So it's all about being confident and ready. So yeah, definitely check out food challenges. Uh, even I wrote the articles in like 2014 uh, 2015. And even all these years later, there still isn't really anything that I wish that was on there. Uh, every basic question is pretty much answered. The goal is for you to take all the information you learn, the basics from foodchallenges.com, and then personalize it, adapt it just through practice and experience to develop everything that you want to do for yourself. But uh, the, the website is definitely good for the first 20 well, you know what? If you're a restaurant out there, has an amazing eating challenge, and you're watching this or listening to this podcast, you want to get in touch with this guy, Randy Santel. Amen to that. It's going to be an awesome 2021. We really hope that. And I, I really hope that we'll be able to do an eating challenge together one day. Um, what? Katina Eats Kilos is my girlfriend. And yeah. uh, we just started dating in July. We met in Alaska during a food challenge tour. But uh, she's, I think, been to Canada once. I've been a couple times, but one of our big plans for 2021 is we're going to uh, land in Vancouver, which isn't too far from her in Spokane, Washington, and then rent a car, and then we're just going to do one massive road trip. Uh, where would that be? I guess, yeah, east, all the way to like Halifax, Nova Scotia, or something like that. Spend like a month and just do all the food challenges we can. So definitely excited about that one. I'm really hoping that 2021 is a lot better for many people and, uh, you know, your food challenges, the show must go on and it's got to go on somehow. I know mean, you're able to travel within the United States right now, but, um, with this vaccine and everything opening up, hopefully it opens up and doesn't get a lot worse, but, um, yeah. I'm really hoping that, uh, your show continues. Um, there's one thing I got to ask you though, uh, the name Atlas, you're, you're a very big fan of Sylvester Stallone. And, uh, I am definitely. Yeah. Well, so, so why'd you take that name? Well, Atlas actually has nothing to do with Sylvester Stallone, but that's where the hat comes uh, from the hat turn in my pre ritual. But uh, did you ever watch a show Jersey shore? How old are you? Oh, I remember that show. Don't worry. Okay. <laughs> All right. Yeah. Jersey shore was really big. I mean, it was around the time of the first season. 
uh, back in 2010 when my buddy Dan and I were going to do the, our first food challenge. And then most of the major competitive eaters uh, at the time had cool nicknames. So we were trying to think of cool nicknames to have. Uh, we were going to put them on the back of our shirts before our first pizza challenge. And we tried so hard to come up with stuff as cool as the situation. Uh, but we just had no luck. So one day he texted me. Uh, he said, hey, I want to be Zeus. And I thought about it for a little bit. And I wanted to be themed. So if he was going to be Zeus, I was going to be Atlas. So that's kind of where Atlas and Zeus Promotions came from. My friend Dan did my first team pizza challenge with me. And then he did the second one, too, which was a solo challenge. He got his butt kicked by that. And then he quit. I don't think he's ever done a food challenge since. I just thought that Atlas Promotions sounded stupid. And that I wanted to do more than just food challenges. So I loved the A to Z uh, aspect of the logo that I had made. So we just went with Atlas and Zeus promotions. You've, quilt, you've built quite the foundation for yourself moving forward to go into the nutrition dietitian uh, industry. Uh, congratulations uh, on your strategy, on, on all the food challenges that you've, you've conquered. Um, you're close to 1,000 now, right? Yes. Yeah. I'm at uh, 917 food challenge wins in all 50 states and then in 37 countries. So the goal uh, before I'm all done, I want to have over a thousand wins, which I'll definitely do that. But I want to have wins in all 50 states, which have already done that. I'd like to have at least two wins in every state. And then I want to have a win in every Providence or state of Canada and Australia. So I've done most of the ones in Canada and Australia. I just have to focus a lot on the western half of um, Canada, and then I've only got a couple more to do in Australia. But yeah, once the world opens back up, we're going to be getting to Australia, going to get back over to the UK, get to Canada. Uh, I still need to get to South Africa, uh, Brazil, because I'd like to have as many wins as I can in as many continents too. So the dream, I guess call it a pipe dream, because I have no idea how I'd do it. It'd be super expensive, but before I'm all done, I want to do a food challenge in uh, Antarctica. That would be awesome. Have you researched any food challenges in, our, in Antarctica? You know, I don't even think there's even any restaurants. We would have to pair with a uh, like a, a, a crew of scientists or something like that where they have like a restaurant uh, and just have them uh, cook it up for me. I don't even know what it would be, but it would be so cool to say I have a win in all seven continents. That might be a possibility. Start putting your feelers out there now and uh, hey, make it happen. If you got enough money, you can usually achieve your goals. I mean, I don't want to do a food challenge on the moon, but I'll settle yeah. for Antarctica. <laughs> I don't know what, what dish is needed for the moon. Maybe, uh, I mean, I guess. We, are, we, we, we keep joking. I'm going to be a, uh, do a big seal. Yeah. Uh, Randy, I have a question I ask every celebrity actor, entrepreneur who comes on this show. Uh, it's about coffee. How do you take your coffee? Uh, actually, I like it just uh, strong. Uh, I don't really add too much in it. Actually, uh, since I started dating Katina, um, she adds uh, a few things to it, but I started adding a little bit of almond milk uh, to the instant coffee. But as far as when it's actually just like actual coffee, I just take it straight. I just enjoy it just like that. That sounds Every awesome. now and then when I'm feeling real bougie, I'll have a pumpkin spice latte uh, when oh, it's in wow. season. <laughs> you want to feel all cozy in the winter yeah and the yeah, start feel all nice and bougie. thank you so much randy for coming on my show um check no, out randy. thanks for having me i've been excited about this one this was fun yeah man uh let's let's do this again sometime maybe we can get katina on the show as well um yeah i know she'd be interested I'm very into the, the competitive you, eating thing and the food challenges and everything that has to do with food um you know it's a really cool thing um especially because food just drives the conversation in every aspect of life. And what are we doing to that? And I mean, in, in the people that aren't able to eat physically, they want to eat. So that's one of the cool things is we have people that are cutting, trying to lose weight, stuff like that. They will kind of live vicariously through us, uh, just watching us eat. And then they're able to feel at least kind of satisfied or to the point where uh, they don't need to eat or they kind of lose their cravings or, or something like that so and then we also have uh we have a lot of kids actually that watch uh there's some parents that email me or they send me messages or something like that and they'll talk about how their child used to take like an hour to eat just normal size meals but then they got him or her watching our videos and then now they like put a hat on the kid 
turn it around and the kid eats the meal in like 20 minutes. And they said it saves like so much time of their day. It's so awesome. Or else we have a lot of kids with cystic fibrosis uh, that uh, have a lot higher calorie needs that watch our videos to kind of motivate them to eat more. So it's awesome what all has become of what we started back in 2010. Uh, I knew there was definitely potential with everything, but I, of course, wasn't able to just plan out and expect all of this that is that has come from it. It's been pretty awesome. Randy, I think the best is yet to come for you. I Agreed. Still, I yeah, think the no, best is still, still to coming come. up on some of the dietitians. So it's going to be fun. And then it's also going to be able to be fun uh, to travel with Katina because she'll be doing food challenges for her channel. And uh, we have our own separate, uh, I guess, fan groups. And then, of course, the ones that watch both of us. But, yeah, there's a lot upcoming still with, like, my final two or three years of professional eating. I'll do a massive retirement tour. But then I'll start traveling for public speaking and a whole lot more, helping people with nutrition weight management. So, yeah, no, it's there's a lot upcoming I'm excited for. I'm actually very, very excited. <laughs> I, judging by that smile, you're super excited. So it sounds like everything's coming together, man. It already has come together, but it's going to come full circle for you. And uh, thank you so yeah, much. So man. Cool. This kind is of like so with cool. you, if you just started this in March to already have that many listeners, that's awesome, man. Thanks, man. It's uh, I, I really appreciate everyone who comes on the show, takes the time out of the day. Everybody who listens to the show subscribes. Uh, and if you haven't, you know, Obviously, 1.2 million uh, subscribers on YouTube. That's still on YouTube. We got 1.3 on Facebook. That's yeah, man. That's incredible. That. Um, building that fan base. Uh, it, one last thought. Uh, or yeah. I think I want you to say uh, to someone who's trying to start out a channel or whatever, it, it's, it's about just keep on going, right? Um, doesn't matter how many subscribers. Yeah, if you start with the expectation of money, uh, I kind of pity you already. So, I mean, I spent like seven, eight years uh, at a pretty much operating at a loss uh, to get all this going. So it, uh, what I have now definitely did not happen overnight. I started just because I loved it. I loved everything I was doing, all the traveling, uh, everything I was doing. Uh, it was not for money at all. Uh, it was just I kept on wanting to work towards the dreams I had of kind of building all this and getting it going. And finally, the tipping point came and everything's been pretty good since June 2018. That's incredible. Thanks so much, man. Well, we'll see you at the dinner table or we'll see you on YouTube or your next food eating challenge. Yes. Hopefully at some point people can watch you on my channel. <laughs> yeah, man. It'd be awesome. Let's do it. Uh, and we'll, we'll probably watch the ambulance resuscitate me after. Like, <laughs> oh no, I'm going to save you. And then you yeah. get a medal and that's going to be a, a million view video. <laughs> yeah, man. All right. Well, take care. Let's do this again sometime soon. Sounds good, George. Thanks for your time. And thanks to everybody that's been listening. Uh, if you want to watch some videos, everything is Randy Santel. There's only one.